Good morning. Uh, didn't think uh, I'd get this recorded uh, for this Sunday, but um, uh, I was able to finally. So uh, uh, let us begin our worship, our call to worship. The mystery of God's Spirit prompts us to assemble here. God's love leads us to gather, to be in community. That we are bound to one another to form the body of Christ. And we arrive in our disparity and our separateness with our sorrows and our doubts, with our joys and our tears, with our questions and our yearnings. And God welcomes us just as we are. Let us respond with praise and thanksgiving in worship and in prayer. Amen. I'm reading a text from the minor prophet Habakkuk, uh, chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, and 2, verses 1 through 4. And Habakkuk in this text is expressing his anger towards God. The oracle that the prophet Habakkuk saw, O Lord, how long shall I cry for help, and you will not listen, or cry to you violence, and you will not save? Why do you make me see wrongdoing and look at trouble? Destruction and violence are before me. Strife and contention arrive. So the law becomes slack and justice never prevails. The wicked surround the righteous. Therefore, judgment comes forth perverted. I will stand at my watch post and I will station myself on the rampart. I will keep watch to see what he will say to me and what he will answer concerning my complaint. Then the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain on tablets so that a runner may read it. For there is still a vision for the appointed time. It speaks of the end and it does not lie. If it seems to tarry, wait for it. It will surely come. It will not delay. Look at the proud. Their spirit is not right in them. But the righteous live by their faith. Thanks be to God for the reading and hearing of the word. I was going to preach today on Luke's story of Zacchaeus, the tax collector, but circumstances this week forced me to turn my attention to the words of the prophet Habakkuk. So we'll leave poor old Zacchaeus sitting in his sycamore tree uh, for another time. Today happens to be Reformation Sunday which is always celebrated on the last Sunday of October. And it was on this day that we remember Martin Luther, whose actions precipitated the beginning of the Protestant faith. And as he stood before what was called the Diet or the Assembly of Worms in 1521, he was commanded by a large group of powerful clergy and statesmen to repudiate his writings. But he replied, saying, My conscience is captive to the word of God. I cannot and I will not recant anything. So help me God. And Luther's collected works, which were issued under his supervision, give the closing words, Here I stand, I can do no other. And it's said that Luther's conversion happened when he was reflecting and pondering the words from Paul's letter to the Romans uh, in chapter 1 verse 17 the verse the just shall live by faith but Paul actually writes in this text as it is written the just shall live by faith because he's in fact referring to the passage I read from the Hebrew Bible the prophet Habakkuk unfortunately over time those words the just shall live by faith have been turned into a kind of a formula which works something like this. If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. And that's how formulas work. A equals B. The result, A, salvation, confidence of life after death, equals the other side of the equation in B, belief in Christ and a public confession of faith. 
But when I was studying this text from Habakkuk this week with Rabbi Ellis, he pointed out something that I, I kind of already knew, that the so-called formula so often used by many churches is not what Habakkuk means by faith. So let's examine this minor prophet more closely. He lived during a very difficult time in Israel, shortly before the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem, its city and its temple and the scattering of its people. And even before this happened, Habakkuk was in despair because of the corruption and the iniquity in his society. And while he's angry about what's happening around him, he's even more angry because of God's indifference. And his prayer to God is grounded in his frustration with God. How long, how long will I cry for help and you will not listen? Or listen or cry to you Hamas, which means violence, and you will not save. Why do you make me see wrongdoing? Why do you make me look at trouble and then do nothing about it? There's no neat formula of faith here in Habakkuk's prayer to God. There's anger, there's frustration, and that, in fact, is evidence of a relationship with God. But it's not neat and tidy, and there are no pat answers here to life's problems and life's tragedies. It's messy. I was given a sense of how Habakkuk might have felt this week when Leah died. And I found myself asking, why would God stand by and do nothing while this wonderful woman was taken from her friends, her family, and from us, her community, and so rapidly, so quickly, before anyone could even begin to grapple with her death? And I was reminded of Habakkuk's prayer, Lord, I cry to you, Hamas, violence, but you will not save? When I was gathered with Leah's family and friends at the hospital, we were talking about why God lets bad things happen to good people. And someone said, you know, whichever way you look at this, it's pretty shitty. And then she apologized, I guess because I'm a minister, and I said, no apologies are necessary. This is shitty. And forgive me for swearing, my one excuse this week is that it's Reformation Sunday and Luther himself swore like a trooper. But there are no apologies necessary when we are angry with God, which I have been all week and still am. But I know also that God can take our hurt and our frustration and God stays with us regardless of the shattering pain of loss. In his book, Night, Ellie Weasel writes of a death camp inmate asking, Where is God? Where is he? When a youth hung by the SS was still in agony after 30 minutes. And Brian Spink says this is what is known as a lost prayer, where there doesn't seem to be an answer. But Weasel found himself answering within himself, Where is God? God is here, hanging on the gallows. And it's similar to the prayer that Jesus cried on the cross, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? In the incarnation, in Jesus, God experiences that there is no God. God knows what it's like to pray a prayer that goes unanswered. In the second chapter of his book, Habakkuk demonstrates what the verse the just shall live by faith really means. As Pamela Cooper White describes, Habakkuk places himself squarely where God can see him at a watch post high on a rampart wall. And his steadfastness and his faithful watchful waiting is rewarded by a vision. And in order for Habakkuk to see this vision and an end to injustice and grief, he stations himself in God's sight 
saying he's not going anywhere until he receives God's reply. And that's what we are called to do, to live into a faith that's not a formula, but a relationship. And we're called to say with Luther, here we stand, we can do no other. We stand where God can see us. We stand with those who are hurting and grieving, especially today with George, Jonathan, Laura and all of their family, so that they can see us as well. It's a messy faith, and one which has to bear anger and hurt and unanswered prayer. But it is a faith grounded in this relationship that we have with God through Jesus Christ, a relationship that God will never give up on. And following Habakkuk's example, neither should we. Amen. And so as we conclude our worship today, let us remember that God gives us the vision so let us go and see others as our sisters and our brothers. Jesus gives us the eyes. So let us look in all the unexpected places to welcome all into our lives. And the Spirit calls us to watch. So let us bear witness to the justice and the hope coming into our shattered world. Thanks be to God. Amen. Have a blessed day and see you next time.